Good day, everybody. It's 2020, and there's nothing that defines this year more than the coronavirus. So I figure, why not make a sculpture of a coronavirus? You know, to honor the year. Now, in one of my other videos, we made this copper sanitation bar. We know that copper has antibacterial properties, and coronavirus doesn't live too long on copper. So what if I made a coronavirus out of copper? It would be a coronavirus killing copper coronavirus. It'd be like making an action figure of Superman out of kryptonite. Let's make a coronavirus killing copper coronavirus. I've never seen one, but this is what the internet tells me a coronavirus looks like, which looks like a nightmare to cast. There's other pictures here. Different artists have different representations. I think that might actually be a photo. I don't know. Now the problem I'm gonna have if I were to sculpt something like this and try to cast it out of metal is every little pocket would be an air bubble. So instead of sculpting a virus out of clay, I'm gonna go directly to Lost Wax Casting. I got these at Hobby Lobby and they're either for Christmas ornaments or making bath bombs. I'm coating the inside with some microcrystalline wax to make a hollow wax ball. I should have used a mold release because as soon as the wax hardened, it welded itself to the inside of the plastic. So I'm gonna use a razor to try to get it out. Yeah, I'm gonna end up in the hospital for sure. I put it in the freezer so it'll get really hard and hopefully shrink so it'd be easier to separate from the plastic. Well, I got one side out, but the other side is still stuck on it. Well, that's one way to do it. Putting it in the freezer did make the wax pretty brittle though, and it cracked a bit. So we're gonna redo this one. But this time, we're gonna use a mold release. So that worked pretty good. So I got two round balls here. Two spheres here. So now it's time for the wax chasing. I've just got one seam. I'm gonna buzz that off, blend it in, and then we'll be ready for investing. This is the only drill bit this size that I had. Just be glad I'm not your dentist. I need to carefully drill a hole into the ball just so I can get the investment on the inside. That's what's gonna keep it hollow when I cast it. I was told to mix some sawdust in the investment, but I didn't have any, so I made some real quick. That's the thing about sawdust, it's easy to make. The sawdust is supposed to increase the investment's porosity, make it a little softer so it's less likely to crack the inside of the ball when the metal contracts. Dang it, I forgot the nails. So trying to beat the investment from hardening, I ran to get the nails. I heated the nail up because I figured it would go into the wax a lot better. Problem is, I overheated it, kind of by a lot. So I learned if I heat just the tip up a little bit, it'll go in, but without melting everything. The nails are gonna hold the investment in place. When the wax melts and drains out, I need something to keep that hollow core in place. That's interesting. Apparently the investment expands and it cracked my orb. At least it's in the wax and it's a pretty easy fix. So I'm gonna take a chance and just sprue right over this hole. We'll take it, put it on the sprue like that, and then I won't have to worry about filling that. This means I'm not even gonna to try to get the investment to come out. It's just gonna stay there forever. I added one vent, but in hindsight, I think I should have probably added more. I'm using some metal pipe as a flask. So I hot glue it up and then it's ready for the outer investment. I carve out a little bit of a funnel and then it's ready to burn the wax. You're supposed to heat this investment up pretty slowly and keep it at about 300 degrees for a few hours. But it helps if you flip it upside down so the wax can actually drain out. Stinking mess. 
The wax was burning and really starting to stink the house up, so I brought them outside to my furnace. Problem is, it's hard to control the temperature. This is not what you want to see. I am heating it too fast. It's not supposed to boil like that. I was supposed to heat it to 1300 degrees over a five hour period. I heated it to 1300 pretty much instantly. Meanwhile, for copper, I'm just crushing some copper pipe and that's what we're gonna make the coronavirus body. I've had lots of people give me their two cents throughout my life and I finally found a use for it. The zinc inside the penny axe is a flux and it helps purify the copper. So I put that in there. Although, I probably should have put it in after it was melted. The zinc probably burned up before it ever did anything to the melt. I've got one furnace keeping my molds hot and the other one actually melting the copper. So far my favorite metal to melt is copper. The camera doesn't pick it up very well, but the color and shimmering shine of this glowing metallic liquid is just beautiful. Someday maybe I'll get a camera that can show that. As soon as I poured the metal into the bigger mold, I could see there was a problem. Why? I'm guessing the bubbling was due to some unburned wax inside, or maybe it was reacting with some of the wood chips in the investment. I'm not really sure. But the heat coming off these is amazing. I want to let them cool just a little bit before I quench them. I want to make sure all the metal's solidified first. Quenching them helps the investment break up so it's easier to get the material out. Didn't expect that though. It dropped out of the flask and then I realized, oh, my burning metal's gonna burn a hole through my plastic bucket. And then I had to get it out. It doesn't take too long and it's cool enough to pull out of there. I'm not sure what the temperature should really be before you quench it, but 800 degrees is a little hotter than I wanted. Figure it might be too violent. So I let it cool just a little bit more and then quenched it. That water got pretty hot though, hotter than I expected. Look at that, that turned out pretty good. I'm happy with that. We'll buff all that investment off and see what we got. The smaller one, this is the one that didn't bubble. And you can see there, it's got all these little pockets. It's not what I wanted but it still looks kind of cool. The bigger one, this is the one that was bubbling like a volcano. You can see it's got a lot of little air bubbles. That's because I didn't vacuum cast the investment, but that's okay, that's not a problem. It turned out pretty well. There's a couple pockets like that here and there, but again, that's okay. This is gonna be the virus body. So now from here, we gotta get all those little protein receptors. How do I do that? To get rid of the air bubbles, I just smashed them with a hammer. Although there was one spot that was really thin and I ended up denting it. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking this doesn't look anything like a coronavirus. It's not done yet. Just wait. We're gonna turn this copper wire into a protein. So I took a railroad spike and I drilled a hole in there to hold the wire. I'm gonna try to peen over the top of that copper so it looks kind of like a ball. And that's what the protein receptor is gonna be. But this one just folded over. So I tried it again and added some spacers and that folded over. So then I tried it again with some heat. It worked a little bit better. So once I have it peened over, then I have to thread the shaft. I'm gonna drill a hole into the ball, 
and screw this right into it. One down, 50 more to go. So then I'll drill a hole into the copper ball, but because I didn't drill it straight, I broke the bit. So eventually I get the hole finished and then it's ready to be tapped. That puts the threads in there so I can screw in the protein receptor. And just like that, it doesn't look so good. So this was my idea, but it's not working very good and it looks pretty crappy. So maybe we can try another method here. We'll just clean it up a bit more while we think about it. So pinning over the copper and threading it really isn't working very well. It's not looking very good, but brass is also 60% copper. So I figure if I take a brass screw and modify that, we can get something to look even better. And the color contrast, color contrast would look kind of cool too. I don't want any of the threads to be visible, so I'm gonna file those off. And I don't want the screw heads to be visible, so I'm gonna peen those over so there's no gap visible, just a kind of a round bulbous end. Man, this thing gets hot. But got some shine on it, it's looking better. Tapping all these holes is kind of a slow process, but it's a good lesson in patience. There we go, a coronavirus killing copper coronavirus. And all the coronaviruses will come along and they'll see this big copper coronavirus idol and they'll come to it and they'll stick on it and they'll die. And it'll be sweet revenge. It's not a scientific claim. It's a fun project. There you go, a copper coronavirus. I hope you liked watching that. We do different sculpting projects and different metal work. I'm getting into it. I'm not a master, I just have fun with it. If you wanna see more projects, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like video if you liked it. Thanks for watching.